and the readings will now be given by Gary. The Bible. Psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. First Samuel And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him, and made him his captain over a thousand, and he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Psalms O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, 
even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Romans Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I will now read from Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. The secret place whereof David sang is unquestionably man's spiritual state in God's own image and likeness, even the inner sanctuary of divine science, in which mortals do not enter without a struggle or sharp experience, and in which they put off the human for the divine. Christ Jesus reckoned man in science, having the kingdom of heaven within him. He spake of man, not as the offspring of Adam, a departure from God, or his lost likeness, but as God's child. Spiritual love makes man conscious that God is his father. And the consciousness of God as love gives man power with untold furtherance. Then God becomes to him the all-presence, quenching sin, the all-power, giving life, health, holiness, the all-science, all-law and gospel. The unity of God and man is not the dream of a heated brain. It is the spirit of the healing Christ that dwelt forever in the bosom of the Father and should abide forever in man. When first I heard the life-giving sound thereof and knew not whence it came, nor whither it tended, it was the proof of its divine origin and healing power that opened my closed eyes. In the 1880s, anonymous letters mailed to me contained threats to blow up the hall where I preached. Yet I never lost my faith in God and neither informed the police of these letters, nor sought the protection of the laws of my country. I leaned on God and was safe. He of God's household who loveth and liveth most the things of spirit, receiveth them most. He speaketh wisely, for the Spirit of his Father speaketh through him. He worketh well and healeth quickly, for the Spirit giveth him liberty. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
These two words in scripture suggest the sweetest similes to be found in any language, rock and feathers. Upon this rock I will build my church. He shall cover thee with his feathers. How blessed it is to think of you as beneath the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, safe in his strength, building on his foundation, and covered from the devourer by divine protection and affection. Always bear in mind that his presence, power, and peace meet all human needs and reflect all bliss. And rest assured, you can never lack God's outstretched arm so long as you are in his service. When thought dwells in God, and it should not, to our consciousness, dwell elsewhere, one must benefit those who hold a place in one's memory, whether it be friend or foe, and each share the benefit of that radiation. This individual blessedness and blessing comes not so much from individual as from universal love. It emits light because it reflects, and all who are receptive share this equally. The present self-inflicted sufferings of mortals from sin, disease, and death should suffice so to waken the sufferer from the mortal sense of sin and mind in matter as to cause him to return to the Father's house, penitent and saved. Yea, quickly to return to divine love, the author and finisher of our faith, who so loves even the repentant prodigal, departed from his better self and struggling to return, as to meet the sad sinner on his way and to welcome him home. Beloved Christian scientists, keep your minds so filled with truth and love that sin, disease, and death cannot enter them. It is plain that nothing can be added to the mind already full. There is no door through which evil can enter, and no space for evil to fill in a mind filled with goodness. Good thoughts are an impervious armor. Clad therewith, you are completely shielded from the attacks of error of every sort. And not only yourselves are safe, but all whom your thoughts rest upon are thereby benefited. The self-seeking pride of the evil thinker injures him when he would harm others. Goodness involuntarily resists evil. The evil thinker is the proud talker and doer. The right thinker abides under the shadow of the Almighty. His thoughts can only reflect peace, goodwill towards men, health, and holiness. Beloved students, you have entered the path. Press patiently on. God is good, and good is the reward of all who diligently seek God. Your growth will be rapid if you love good supremely and understand and obey the way-shower, who, going before you, 
has scaled the steep ascent of Christian science, stands upon the Mount of Holiness, the dwelling place of our God, and bathes in the baptismal font of eternal love.